We the Illuminati shall soon begin to establish huge monopolies, reservoirs of colossal riches, upon which even large fortunes of the humans will depend to such an extent that they will go to the bottom together with the credit of the states on the day after the political smash. You gentlemen here present who are economists just strike an estimate of the significance of this combination. In every possible way, we must develop the significance of our super government by representing it as the protector and benefactor of all those who voluntarily submit to us. The aristocracy of the humans as a political force is dead. We need not take it into account. But as landed proprietors, they can still be harmful to us from the fact that they are self-sufficing and the resources upon which they live. It is essential, therefore, for us, at whatever cost, to deprive them of their land. This object will be best attained by increasing the burdens upon land property and loading lands with debt. These measures will check land holding and keep it in a state of humble and unconditional submission. The aristocrats of the humans, being hereditarily incapable of contenting themselves with little, will rapidly burn up and fizzle out. At the same time, we must intensively patronize trade and industry, but first and foremost, speculation, the part played by which is to provide a counterpoise to industry. The absence of speculative industry will multiply capital in private hands and will serve to restore agriculture by freeing the land from indebtedness to the land banks. What we want is that industry should drain off from the land both labor and capital and by means of speculation transfer into our hands all the money of the world and thereby throw all the humans into the ranks of the proletariat. Then the human will bow down before us if for no other reason but to get the right to exist. To complete the ruin of the industry of the humans, we shall bring to the assistance of speculation the luxury which we have developed among the humans, that greedy demand for luxury which is swallowing up everything. We shall raise the rate of wages, which, however, will not bring any advantage to the workers, for at the same time we shall produce a rise in prices of the first necessities of life alleging that it arises from the decline of agriculture and cattle breeding. We shall further undermine artfully and deeply sources of production by accustoming the workers to anarchy and by further undermine uh, to the drunkenness and side by side therewith taking all measure to extirpate from the fact of the earth all the educated forces of the humans. In order that the true moon meaning of things may not strike the humans before the proper time, we shall mask it under an alleged ardent desire to serve the working classes and the great principles of political economy about which our economic theories are carrying on at an energetic propaganda. The intensification of armaments, the increase of police forces are all essential for the completion of the aforementioned plans. What we have to get at is that there should be, in all the states of the world, besides ourselves, only the masses of the proletariat, a few billionaires devoted to our interests, police, and soldiers. Throughout all Europe, and by means of relations with Europe and other continents also, we must create ferments, discords, hostility. Therein we gain a double advantage. In the first place, we shall keep in check all countries, for they well know that we have the power, whenever we like, to create disorders or to restore order. All these countries are accustomed to see in us an indispensable force of coercion. In the second place, by our intrigues, we shall tangle up all the threads which we have stretched into the cabinets of all states by means of the political by economic treaties or loan obligations. In order to succeed in this, we must use great cunning and penetration during negotiations and agreements, 
But as regards what is called the official language, we shall keep to the opposite tactics and assume the mask of honesty and compliancy. In this way, the peoples and governments of the humans whom we have taught to look only at the outside, whatever we present to their notice, will still continue to accept us as the benefactors and saviors of the human race. We must be in a position to respond to every act of opposition by war with the neighbors of that country which dares to oppose us, but if these neighbors should also venture to stand collectively together against us, then we must offer resistance by a universal war. The principal factor of success in the political is the secrecy of its undertakings. The word should not agree with the deeds of the diplomat. We must compel the governments of the humans to take action in the direction favored by our wide conceived plan, already approaching the desired consummation by what we shall represent as public opinion, secretly pr prompted by us through the means of that so-called great power, uh, the press, the media, oh yes, which with a few exceptions that may be disregarded, is already entirely in our hands and under our control. In a word, to sum up our system of keeping the governments of the humans and so forth, especially in Europe and Czech, we shall show our strength to one of them by terrorist attempts and to all. If we allow the possibility of a general rising against us, we shall respond with the guns of America, or China, or Japan. <laughs>